Bonjour, Namaste, welcome to Modern Dance in India today. The first generation of star dancers India produced as we know are Uday Shankar, whose discovery by Anne Pavlova sparked a creative partnership in London and Paris. Soon Shankar returned to India to set up his own dance company and engage many including musicians like Baba Alauddin Khan Sahib, Timir Baran and Vishnu Das Shirali to create everlasting works. His younger brother Ravi Shankar distinguished himself later as a world class sitarist. In classical dance, Ram Gopal of Bangalore put three classical dance forms Bharatanatyam, Kathak and Kathakali on world map. These two can be called pioneers for they believed in Indian dance and helped reach out as early as in 1930s to 1940s. They went to gurus in their villages and sought to learn from them. Slowly, traditional teachers called gurus left their villages and settled in big cities and started teaching traditional dances and thus many more aspirants started learning dance art properly. In Madras alone, Chennai as we call it in the 1940s, the fountainheads of Bharatanatyam dance could be found in the 40s through the 60s. Guru Muthukumaran Pillai, Guru Minakshi Sundaram Pillai, Chokalingam Pillai, Lappa Pillai, Guru Gopinath from Travancore Trivandrum, even Uday Shankar making a full length feature film called Kalpana, all were in Madras in that period. In North, thanks to creation of Bharatiya Kala Kendra, lot of Kathak Gurus could come and teach like Shambhu Maharaj, Sundar Prasad, Birju Maharaj. In Bombay, Lachu Maharaj, Mohan Rao Kalyanpurkar, Madam Menka, Sitara Devi, Damenti Joshi, Roshan Kumari could further the art form of Kathak. In Calcutta, in absence of any classical form, Odissi had not been established yet. Many went to learn from Uday Shankar and other Manipuri gurus settled there like Amobi Singh. Lahore then, still part of India, had Zora and Kameshwar Segal and Pyarelal. All of the 1950s and 60s saw a glorious revival of these forms and traditions and by the 1970s, India was truly dancing. The revival of classical dance forms meant a more prominent visibility to both the art and the artists. Dancers became almost as important as film stars in the 60s and 70s and were society names. The cult of prima donnas like Shanta Rao, Indrani Rahman, Yamni Krishnamurti was established. Real dancers also became film stars like Vijayanti Mala and Hema Malini who went from Madras to Bombay to seek bigger name and fortunes. Indian dance had arrived center stage. By then, Orissi as a dance form was also established and thus joined the pantheon of classical forms. Four legendary gurus, Pankacharandas, Keluchan Mahapatra, Mayadhar Raut and Deva Prasad Das all helped create its repertoire. Their students, Rita Devi, Mineti Mishra, Indrani Rehman, Kum Kum Das, Sanjukta Panigrahi, Sonal Man Singh, Aloka Panikar and Aloka Kanango and Kiran Segal arrived as worthy names on national stage. Gurus of various forms were training new talents and all through the 70s we see most dance forms being revived and performed grandly. No state function was complete without a classical dance performance by a top name. To become a soloist of merit and repute, it takes minimum of 20 years in Indian classical forms. This is because a minimum of 10 years are required for learning, another 10 for arriving professionally. Thus, a dancer starts to train at an early age, at 7 or 9, and by 20 is ready for debut. The next decade goes in gaining experience and professional acclaim. If lucky, after that, other things being equal, can one be successful and become a known name and then the real struggle of maintaining that success starts. All in all, a rather arduous profession with no assured gains. In the 1980s, a slow trend started where those who were not doing or flourishing in solo classical styles wanted to break away and make new artistic statement. 
Their exposure abroad and world travels also helped them see what was going on in Germany. Kurt Hughes, Pina Bausch, USA, Ted Sean, Ruth St. Denis, Martha Graham, Merce Cunningham, Paul Taylor in France and England did not prove much fodder then as in the early 20th century. Ballet still ruled roost with ballerinas like Italian Emma Piteri, Russian Anna Pavlova and Diaglev settled in London. These path breakers from India who wanted to go beyond the classical tradition having failed to establish themselves as soloists of repute were Bharatanatyam dancers Chandralekha and Kathak dancer Kumud Nilakhya. Both had learned traditional styles like Bharatanatyam and Kathak and had tried their hand and feet for decades to become a soloist without much success. Before this cut off point in 1984, there were true ballet, dance drama in Indian context, masters like Uday Shankar, Sachin Shankar, Narendra Sharma, Shanti Bardhan, Prabhat Ganguly, and they basically created dance dramas based on Indian themes. They did not debunk tradition or say classical dance was of little merit. Chandralekha wished to position herself anew and made pompous statements that classical dance had no future. She must have meant there was no future for all in it. The best years for soloists in Indian context is 25 to 30 years of age. Unlike in Western ballet traditions where body is central to dance, in Indian classical forms, the soul, the spirit is the key. Body or shape and size of it is almost secondary, though it helps to have a finely tuned dance body. We have had cases of aging, heavily set dancers, bald men, but they all were respected as great gurus and legendary dancers. In 1984, a German bureaucrat called George Lechner posted at the Max Miller Bhavan in India and married to dancer Sonal Mansingh, who had left Bharatanatyam for Odyssey, decided to initiate and host a platform. For all those who felt Indian classical dance was a dead end and needed new winds to blow, he hosted the first East-West encounter in Bombay and invited all those dancers who needed a new platform. The new breakaway lot of Chandralekha and Kumudanilakya wanted to make an artistic statement that was Indian in nature but not entirely classical in body or form. The simplest route was to take the form they had been taught and use features or elements from it. So they both created group works and thus the energy of soloists was magnified. Both succeeded somewhat because in mid 80s the climb was right for experimentation. India had arrived internationally and new statement and art was welcome after all reviving of tradition had been sought of attended to. Both also had limited success because their students did not have same strong foundation in any classical form. Thus this style could be cloned but not grow beyond a point. While Chandralekha's success was short lived and in her end years she was lampooned with and her promoters wanted to put her on par with the Pina Bausch of India label. Kumudini was smarter to create a corpus of students who can continue her work though owing to her personality and temperament few wish to stay and work with her. Her prime student Daksha Sage, the best creative choreographer of India today has branched off on her own and now stays in Kerala and creates her artistic work far from the maddening crowd. Malik Shah and Ipsita stay in Ahmedabad, the same city where Kumudini Lakhya is based, but have branched off to do their own thing. Aditi Mangaldas too has left Ahmedabad and loves and works in Delhi. Leshner tried to duplicate the encounter in 2001 again in Bombay, but by this time the movement of avant-garde dance was truly dead and even cosmopolitan audiences of Bombay walked out of Chandralekha's last work, Sharira, which was soft pawn in appeal, Indian audiences said, no, thank you. In the 90s, the art of the solo dancers was slowly getting replaced with group art. This happened because of several reasons. Real gurus or master teachers who taught for love of art and not just money were declining. Real students who loved art more than their own glory were fewer. Patronage systems have not kept with growing volume of dancers and the state fortunately has no evident cultural policy because India is the size of Europe with bigger population and diversity which no one policy can contain. Group dancers also give a sense of variety and opportunity for more to dance. 
It also covered up the individual lack of mastery over one idiom as a strong classical foundation was missing. All in all, a dilution of tradition took place. While Indian classical dances have been much celebrated and exposed internationally, many are aware of the extent and contribution of a few pioneering foreign dance figures, without whose example the classical dance traditions of India might never have reached the popularity and pinnacle it has. Forms like Odissi, Chao or even martial arts like Kalari and Thangta, so much in vogue today, were not even known to mainstream India. Many dancers learned two or more styles to survive and be professionally relevant in the early years after independence. This trend continued for long until it gave way to an amalgamation or fusion of different forms when the art of the soloist gave way to group art. Today, fusion has led to some confusion. The coming of several institutions in the decade after the visit by foreigners of note led to creation of many major institutions like the Kerala Kalamandalam, Kalakshetra and Shantiniketan to specifically teach and nurture traditional Indian dances which happened after this decade in the 1920s. The offshoot of this was an engagement of traditional teachers who left their rural moorings and came to teach in big cities like Madras, Chennai today and much later Delhi. While Indian dances have reached out to most corners of the world now, thanks also to Indian diaspora, the original catalysts were a few pioneering foreigners who visited India and inspired many Indians to relook at their own dance traditions. They played a significant role in shaping the fortunes of Indian dances. In the mid-80s, some exponent of classical forms who had not much success with solo dancing took to experimentation. Kumudni Lakhyan Kathak, Chandalekhyan Bharatanatyam were the leading lights of this new direction. For them, creating from within tradition was a challenge as they had not succeeded in Gharana culture. They also had modern outlook and eclectic exposure to trends abroad. Today, we see a new breed of acrobatics and gymnastics that is being palmed off as dance. This has happened as neither teachers have time to teach for years nor students. Films also mean that the artists must know horse riding as well as dancing, skating as well as singing. Thus small steps, group formations and some jhatka matka are enough to get by. Even television and film choreographers are maha busy teaching this kind of dancing which is hardly Indian. Every society has contemporary response to its times. This manifests in design, architecture, films, dance and the arts. Contemporary necessarily does not mean modern. Modern dance has arisen out of these experiments and today we have quite a few proponents of contemporary dance. Is modern dance a specific language like Kathak or Bharatanatyam? Does it have a specific language, structure or characteristics? How is it modern? Corporate India has also not done much to support the arts because there is no incentive or tax benefits to such support. Unlike in USA, where public support by companies can be written off under tax systems, in India that is missing for several quasi-socialistic reasons. Politicians have no real interest in the arts anyway. The Gandhi family had some vision and interest and from the Nehru to the Indra to New India today, there was some talent appointed in the field of arts and culture. The best known dance talents today in what can be truly called modern or contemporary Indian dance are very few. Daksha Seth, based in Kerala uses Kathak, Kalari and Chau and is first rate. She takes five to eight years to create a production and is not in the market for name or glory. She is a true genius and a great artist. The gap after her is immense because most others are copying and cloning each other or are leftovers of Chandraleka and Komodani structure. A few who have done sustained work are Asta Debu, Aditi Mangaldas, Adagalari, STEM groups of Bangalore. Classical dance continues to rule 
roost because modern dance lacks clear language or direction and audiences mix fusion for confusion. Fusion dance is a shortcut to several demanding dance realities. Few have time and talent to learn for long. There are no real gurus or masters left. Teachers have become gurus and there is a vast difference between the two. One is in the marketplace, other is about passion and pursuing an art form. Urban realities have also contributed to contexts of time and space, both being at a premium. Thus, learning and performing fusion dance is easy. Fusion in the Indian context today does not merely mean a sensible mix of two or more forms or styles. It means a hand of Bharatanatyam, a foot of Kathak, makeup of Kathakali and pace of Manipuri. Martial forms like Chau and Kalari have gained currency because they look dramatic and fulsome. This fusion is not a defined merging, a defined form. Each does his own or her own and none have staying power of more than 10 minutes or more. In fusion, minimum training or none can help one create some esoteric item that can be called anything. Wind, air, water, karma, reaching out, looking within, any fancy and vague title will do. The more esoteric and vague, the better. This type is easy to do as the creator generally takes the liberty of simply borrowing or stealing any existing music of any composer. Bach rubs shoulder with Keith Jarrett and El Subramanium with Pavarotti. Some vague body movements, some stretches and some international looking shiny leotard costumes are all one needs to arrive on stage and also on page 3, society pages. Increasingly, films to support and offer these new bastardized forms because it is new. In the name of innovation, anything goes and while many groups and talents spring up often, few last beyond two seasons. Thus fusion is not taken seriously as dance culture and some artists like Bharat Sharma, Anita Ratnam, Madhuri Padhyay, Samudra are all doing dance theatre. But with more than 10 years of this new genre of dance fusion, many in the audiences still wish to see the pure traditional forms and their beauty. After 10 years of this new genre fusion, many in the audiences wish to return to pure traditional form and their beauty. Thus, it is always a delight to see an Alar Melwarli who ranks supreme as Bharatanatyam talent of today, followed by a host of wannabes. None have the staying power, the brilliance of the form and the beauty of art like her. Leela Sampson, Malvika Sarukai, Satyanarayan Raju, Urmila Satyanarayan show seriousness of purpose. In Orissi, there is a big gap between generation last, Sanjukta Panigrahi, Aloka Panikar and Kiran Sagal, and generation next. And by default, it is filled by Madhvi Mudgal, whose aesthetics are high, but dance appeal bit cold. Good lights and costumes can enhance, but not entirely make up for beauty and depth of our classical dance. Shamila Biswas of Calcutta is slowly emerging as someone with a difference in Odyssey. The Protima Bedi students of Nithigram in Bangalore have mastered the art of presentation and are successful abroad with dramatic lights and poses. At home, this novel institution Protima created on the lines of traditional Gurukul, Art Armitage is part of history. In Kathak, soloists of merit are hard to name as most do group work now, but Prerna Shimali are one exception. Rajendra Gangani, Malik Shah remain somewhat senior while youngsters Tushar Bhatt and Swikrit are beginning to make a mark. In Kuchipudi, Vajanti Kashi and Anand Shankar Jayant are in good form today and in Mohini Atam, the mother-daughter duo of Bharati Shivaji and Lakshmi Priya try to be true to the form. The popular dances on television reflect young India and its aspirations and then suddenly many more seem to be dancing. In the last 20-25 years, India has become a young, modern, technologically progressive nation. Today, it has world's largest young populace. Nearly 60% of its 1 billion population is under 25 years of age. Imagine 600 million people under 25 years of age. It is a big resource and a challenge. 
Bogi Vogi is the longest running dance show for kids on television, two decades. Nach Baliye, India's Got Talent and other shows dominate television. Tal Mail was highest rated TV serial on Indian dance made for Doordarshan. In 2015, what do we see of Indian dance? The plate is full and overflowing. <laughs> there are thousands of classically trained dancers who seem to be at it and perform even when there is no obvious support systems. Most performances are not ticketed and relatives and friends make up the audience. The press is generous because it has space to fill when cricket and football are not being played. Critical appraisal, having gone out of newspapers in last decade, only page 3 society columns are left. Quality has taken over by quantity. Classical dance being always marginalized in most societies, Indian dances are no exception. Audiences are limited, though committed. Big cities, and that means minimum of 10 million people, are busy teaching, projecting, propagating dance forms. And while many parents desire their children learn some art form, especially in South India, the insular and civilized part of India, the lack of professional avenues make it difficult to pursue it as a career. It is customary that most children learn some dance form, especially girls, till they are 20 and then decide if it is to be a profession. Pushy parents seeking social esteem and better marriage prospects also encourage their daughters to learn. So if nothing else, it helps them in deportment, social graces and confidence levels. Once married, family and responsibilities take over. 90% of those who learn for 5 to 10 years between ages 10 and 20 never take to stage professionally. Dance is a calling, not just a career. Thus, what is modern in India today, fusion or in confusion? If one sees the variety of possibilities, what emerges are three trends, using classical forms in new ways, using technology and creativity on old forms and three, innovating devising new body languages. Thus, unlike the West, where modern is a complete break from the past, in India that's not possible totally, as our heritage is important and we are not fighting it. We also have learned to live with many invaders and their cultures in the past thousand years. So in India there is no clash of civilization, but a fusion. Modern for Indian dance is acceptance of past and future.